Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is Two Back or Not Two Back. We'll be diving into a whole bunch of campaigns. There's a bunch of board game adjacent campaigns. There's also a bunch of campaigns that are not funding. And then, of course, we have a bunch of campaigns. There'll be timestamps and links to everything down below, so you can jump around at your convenience. But with that, let's start us off with our cult of the now, War of the Ring, the card game. War of the Ring, the card game is abstracting the long, magnificent experience that is the War of the Ring. I, supposedly, I'd have actually played it, but the long and magnificent experience that is War of the Ring into a shorter card game experience. From Ares Games, is running you $32 over our miniature market, and the whole point of Cult of the Now is that a reminder that as much as I love crowdfunding, you can get games that are reasonably priced, that have reviews out, and you don't have to wait and wonder and who knows what, the same way you do with crowdfunding. Don't get me wrong, I've gotten a lot of great games from crowdfunding. In fact, last week's video was, you know, some of my favorite games that I've gotten from crowdfunding. But also, in my top games of all time, there's also like, you know, 20, 30 games in my, t my 5 out of 5s that I haven't gotten from crowdfunding. Both are good. Both. Why not both? Both is good. But anyways, that's going to be War of the Ring the Card Game over on Miniature Market for $32. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into a quick sponsored spot from Geek & Son Board Game Tables. They are going to be launching their next crowdfunding campaign for the Gwen Table on April 15th over on Kickstarter. You can check out this article linked below from Kick Agency, both to find out more on the table, but also, to more importantly, to sign up so you get notified when the campaign goes live, so you get all the day one bonuses, day one pricing, extras, uh, all that stuff. They're going to be giving things extras to the table and upgrades and deluxifications to the table for free to backers, so you do want to stay notified for this. Whether or not you get it, you may not even get it. That's totally fine, but you may as well find out what's going on. You may as well get those day one things in the, you know, in the locked in or whatever it is, in order so that if you do want it, you have all the stuff extra as much as possible from there. As the Geek and the Gwen table is going to be giving, you know, the table is going to have the, the that, that LED lighting. It's going to be supposedly at a pretty good price point. We'll see what's going on when the campaign actually launches. But this is Geek and Sons' next table. They've had the Archie recently. They've had the, uh, they had another one over on GameFound recently. And now they're coming back to Kickstarter April 15th with the Gwen table from Geek and Sun game, game Tables. And from there, we dive into a bunch of, well, we're going to start off with not with uh, adjacent crowdfunding. We're going to start off with board game adjacent and then move into not funding. But board game adjacent, we have Cyberpunk RPG from Red Square Games over on GameFound. This is just funded over here. 11,000 pounds, 11,000 euro raised so far out of a 10,000 goal. 110 backers. This is a both a, a RPG as well as potentially they're going to be having a video game coming up as well. So there's like reward options for those as well. Cyberpunk is going to be both an RPG and a video game. This campaign is more focused on the RPG, but with teases and unlocks and things for the video game as well. But this is a, you know, post-apocalyptic setting where you probably don't want to talk to people too much because it looks like they all want to betray you in some way, shape or form. Uh, the video overall looks great, but the video looks more like it's more from the video game. But past that, you can go through the campaign, see what's going on here. RPG stuff I never know quite as much about. I'm actually playing to an RPG right now for the first time in like 12 years, uh, but that's my first time in like 12 years going through an RPG. But that's Cyberpunk RPG from Red Square Games over on GameFound. From there, we have Legends of Keepers 5e Reverse Dungeon and STL Miniatures. 282 backers, $35,000 raised. This is Legends of the Keepers over on Kickstarter. Another RPG along with STL's four miniatures. Specifically, you can see over here from the design from the Lazy Squire team. This is a, They're working in conjunction with Lazy Squire. You can see that in the graphic design of many of the components. You can see that in the miniature quality of what's going on over here. And Lazy Squire in general has some fantastic miniatures. You can even see on the layout of the way they show this picture. This, If this doesn't scream Storm Sunder and, and Wild Ascent, I don't know what does. But past that, Legend of the Keepers over here is over on Kickstarter, RPG and STL miniatures. Again, I don't know a ton about RPG stuff. It all sounds cool, but uh, that's what we have over here. Uh, lots of cool miniatures, I'll say that. But obviously, factor in your own printing method and quality and all that, those things. They're not going to look as good as the STLs. In fact, Lazy Squire Games is one of those few companies where the miniatures they send out actually do look as good as the, you know, the, uh, the renders over here. But that might not be true when you're printing them yourself. I don't know, honestly. I have a 3D printer, but I'm not an expert in the subject. I just have a 3D printer. But then from there, we're going to move on to the modular gaming table by Wormwood. 6,200 backers, 17, $1.7 million raised, 22 days to go. This is the modular game table by Wormwood. They're coming back to Kickstarter with a bunch of new options, a bunch of new configurations. As usual, check out the Wormwood video. They are fantastic. They are compelling. They make you want their products. So I guess if you're not in the market for the table, or if you don't want the table, don't check out the video because it is fantastic and compelling. It will make you want the products. But past that, they also have an, a hex option added to the modular game table line, so you can check that out as well. And then again, the modular game table is meant to be modular. This might be a thing you might be interested in even if you're just looking for accessories, 
or alternatively, ways to uh, modify your, your table if you got in on wave one. They've also made upgrades to the table. In fact, you can check out Ginny D. Ginny D has a fantastic review of the table, where she goes through both the pros and the cons, the way the table has worked for her, the ways it hasn't, as well as the ways that the new Kickstarter is addressing some of those concerns, and so some of the ways that even her concerns might not be a problem for you. That's the modular gaming table from Wormwood over here. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention there's currently some allegations going on against Wormwood and those things. There's some, there is some drama and things going on. I don't, it's way too early for me to overly speculate on what's going on past the uh, public accusations and defenses that are being thrown around. What I will say is I feel that it would be not responsible for me to do this little like, hey, Wormwood, without at least mentioning that there's something going on, and for you to look into and make your own decision accordingly. I'm neither trying to uh, tell you not to back Wormwood or to give them business if there's a problem. I d it's one of those complicated things where right now it's early days, there's a little bit of drama, it, factor that in into your purchasing decisions because it's it's too early to know exactly what's going on and uh, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, so I just want to make sure you're aware of it. I don't want to just, you know, talk about Wormwood without in any way bringing it up, but I also don't want to cast too much blame based on internet, Twitter posts that, yeah, I, hopefully I'm making sense. I, I, I don't want to enable, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to cause pain. I just want to make sure you're informed. But past that, moving on from there, we move to the not funding category. So starting off with Agoura Colorfield and Donut Shop. Now it's worth noting that I am out of town this weekend, which means a few of these campaigns, well, not a few of these, I'm out of, I'm out of, camp, I'm out of town for this weekend, which means I am filming this two days, two days earlier than I normally would, which does mean that some campaigns might be funded by the time you watch this. Just as a heads up in case you're wondering, because you might look at this and say, hey, I think it's funded already. It probably will be funded by the time you watch this. This only just launched recently, and I'm filming this a drop later than usual, so for a few of these campaigns, that might be the case. A few of these I don't think will have funded, in Agoura Colorfield and Donut Shop, I think it probably will have. Just as a heads up in case you see that disparity. Usually I film these like a day in advance, and now I'm filming like three days in advance, and so um, there is that factor taken into account. But anyways, 300 backers, $20,000 raised, 14 days to go. This is coming from 25th Century Games, Chad Alkin's 20th Century Games. This is another one of their trio Kickstarters. They've been running a few of them recently. I think this is the third time they've done one of those uh, pairing up of multiple games. But we have Aguda, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, I imagine I'm not. We have Colorfield, which I imagine I'm saying correctly, and Donut Shop, which I'm definitely saying correctly, I know my donuts. But past that, we're going to have these three campaigns, $49, $29, and $34, giving you various promo packs as well, baked into them, baked into them. You see what I did there with like the Donut Shop, baked into them, that was... That was good, that was good. But then past that, for $95, you can get all three. And frankly, the $95 is probably the way to go as far as the one that's going to save you the most money or be the most compelling as opposed to waiting for retail. In general, 25th Century Games has great retail support, great retail availability. That also does mean that for some of their campaigns, unless you particularly want those extra packs, unless the, you want to particularly want the extra promos, very often it makes sense to just wait and pick the games you want then, possibly at a cheaper price once you factor in shipping and all those things. But if you do want all three of those games, the $95 point, price point combined with the extras you're getting, that's going to be the one that saves you the most and gives you the most compelling incentive to get them on crowdfunding. But past that, the three games I've got is going to be the City of Umbrellas. I don't know the mechanics well on all of these. They got a degree of, of grabbing the right tiles you need and placing them down to your engine in different ways. But all three of them have fantastic breakdowns from uh, Jenna from the Board Game Garden cover them. Well, let's go, let's go through the campaign a bit more over here. So we have a god over here which is going to be about these umbrellas. It's going to be about taking various umbrellas, placing them onto your board in different ways. Uh, we're going to have Color Field, which is about matching up colors. You're going to be grabbing tiles and matching them up to your camera board, trying to create pairings to fulfill various goals and whatnot as you go through this over here. And then lastly, we have Donut Shop, which is going to be laying tiles onto your donut display case in order to package them up and fulfill goals that way. So all of them have a degree of taking things out, putting them onto your board to fill tiles, but they do have nuances in there as far as the ways these games are different. They all have coverage from, from a variety of board game channels. You can check them out. Meeple Mountains covered a bunch of them. Uh, board Game Gardens covered a bunch of them, as well as, well, everyone you see over here. And or if you just search on YouTube for any of these games, you'll see more information on them as well. And then, uh, additionally, all three of them are available on Tabletop Simulator in case you want to run through these yourself. You have that option to see more about them. Oh, Rado's covered a bunch of them as well. Tantrum House. So yeah, a whole bunch of coverage around these games. Coffee break. Sorry about that. It's early morning over here. But anyways, past that, that's what we got as far as these three games. As far as should you back it, should you not, already covered to a degree. The main reason to back this would be if you want all three. Otherwise, unless you specifically want one of those promo packs, waiting for retail is probably cheapest. Uh, given the price point of the game, the fact that it's available at retail, and then of course once you factor in shipping, waiting for retail, getting it in your free $100 order from whatever store you frequent, or getting it even in person in a local online game store, local 
game store, whatever it is, one of those is probably better, cheaper than getting it on crowdfunding if you're looking at just getting one of them. But if you are looking at all three, the price point there is a little bit more compelling as far as giving you the incentive to get them plus the various promo packs online. Moving on, we have The Curse of the Candelabria. This is one that I imagine is probably still not funding by the time you see it, but I'm not sure. Uh, this is currently ambitious, coming in at $77,000 raised out of a $159,000 goal. This is the second time on Kickstarter. They already launched earlier and unfortunately did not fund. This is from Luna Ook Studios, who brought you Sheol. And now they're coming back with The Curse of Candelabria, which the video looks great. The theme looks incredibly compelling. The miniatures look great. The price point is not the cheapest, which might be a factor. Also, I'm not seeing a ton of press around this game. This is one that showed up on Kickstarter and I barely realized it was showing up and then it showed up again for a relaunch and I barely realized it was showing up so it could be that they're I don't know I don't know we'll see what happens over here but this one at $159,000 goal I am a little skeptical it's going to hit that by the time you see this video but it may well hit this by the time the campaign's done uh, currently $77,000 in at this point in the campaign is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing at all and it may, may well hit that 160 by the time they're done obviously if they put a $50,000 goal on the table they could have slapped day one funded easily and just called it a day but Luna Oaks it is in general with their campaign she will do the same thing they put realistic goals on the table in order to uh, make sure they don't have any any shenanigans going on but past that the curse of the candelabria is an area control game that takes place across i believe three rounds and the theme of it is basically everything's been turned to candles that's everything's been turned to candles to wax and so you're running around controlling various units with different forms of of melting points and as you spawn units you're going to be putting different candle things into them which is going to determine like their strength but also like their cost their strength and all these other factors and you're walking on the board controlling just wax armies which between the miniature sculpting and between the theme Honestly, if you had told me, hey, you know, you're going to want a game that's featuring wax armies, I don't know if I would have necessarily believed you. This theme is a little bit weird, but it's working for me. It's a little weird. It's a little over the top. It's a little bit like a Wonderland's War kind of situation as far as what's going on with his wax warriors. But it does it does seem fairly unique and different, and I appreciate that. I'm going to pass that. It's going to be an area control game, controlling the living candles, diving into the fairy tale across a variety of rounds. You try to ultimately spawn your units, control the, control the board, and get as many points as possible in uh, the Curse of the Candelabria. I'm pass that. There's a few different options here as far as the game. There's 89 euro for the core game. There's 120 euros which is going to give you the six player expansion as well as the solo mode as well as all unlock stretch goals and then for 229 you'll also get the armies of the candelabra over there as well and then the art book of the game the neo Freen mat and that's they're going to be giving you over here let's show you the uh, what you're getting over here so we have uh, the game board the co the composable tactics board we have the, the the curse board the upgrade board the house boards all these things over here but i want to show you the specific add-ons you're getting as far as we have wandering castles we have the explorer candles again you see all these little things you're putting down the various candle pieces into them to determine like their their color and as well as their strength we have the pilgrim candles warrior candles look at those warrior candles they're pretty cool and then we have these flames now the flames are particularly important because these will be upgraded we have the level to temple tiles the upgrade tiles the resource cubes the cursed dandies cursed flame tokens whole bunch of things over here just keep scrolling through it and then over here oh we have size comparison for all of this stuff showing you like it almost has vibes of what was that game, the, the, the movie the, from Percy Jackson, not Peter, not Percy Jackson, the movie from Peter Jackson about the, 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 the based on a book, I believe, about those giant siege engines roaming around the earth. I kind of get vibes of that as well mixed into this. But the add-ons, here we go. The Armies of the Candelabra, that's going to be one that upgrades your 128 little flame miniature into actual little miniatures instead. So that's going to be one that's going to be particularly interesting to those of you who like getting like the most premium deluxe version of everything. Obviously, you can get that for an additional 50 euro just in and of itself, or you can get it as part of the all-in pledge. Although the all Pledge has play mats and art books and other things, so it may not be worth it even with the savings. Do the math, figure out what's right for you over there. But past that, that's what we have going on with this game with the Curse of the Candelabria. So, should you back it? Should you not? Well, it's not yet funding, so we'll see ultimately what's going on with it. But ultimately, I think this one will probably fall into the same camp as Shul, which means it'll do fine on holding this value, but not particularly amazingly well, at least so far. Still early to say. But yeah, this is the Curse of the Candelabria. It is expensive, but it does look cool, so you have that, that cross aspect there. But right now, it's just not pulling in enough demand for me to be confident that it's going to pull in that demand on the secondhand market instead. So ultimately, we'll see. But the curse of the candelabria, that's what we have over here. Speaking of curses, we have the next one that's not funding, which is, I guess, not great for curses. We have Cursed Gifts, the devilishly funny card game. $1,800 raised out of a $12,000 goal, 35 backers. I imagine this will not be funded by the time, uh, you know, you're watching this video. But Cursed Gifts is a game, but it's a card game, but basically trying to lay curses onto your opponent to make sure that they get stuck with these curses. So you're kind of playing cards until eventually one player gets enough curses and they get eliminated from the game. That's basically the game. It's a card-based game with a cute little art and about trying to lay curses and stick your 
your opponent with curses that stick in their area of the board. And that's basically what's going on over here. Uh, pledge levels are going to run you 20 euro for the uh, small balls pledge, and 300 dollars for the shut up and take my money, and 45 for the Christmas too early pledge over there. And then 100 euro will just get you everything. And we have three backers at that pledge tier already. But anyways, that's what we have over here. That's going to be the Curse Gifts Devilishly Funny Card Game. From there, we're going to continue in the not funding tether, and this one over here does look like it probably will fund. $4,900 raised out of a $7,500 goal, 252 backers. This is a clever game for two players or two teams of players as you play cards from two different perspectives. Every single card is going to be mirrored effectively, so you can have an 18 is really an 81. But then as you play cards into a grid effectively, what you're doing is one player is playing cards horizontally and the other player is playing cards vertically, and you have to be mindful of both the horizontal and the vertical aspects of your goals while also being mindful of the way your opponent sees those numbers and how it will or won't mess things up. Basically, it's a game that really is very useful if you can see things from the other person's side. So literally, like literally and I guess not so much figuratively as literally. Literally seeing things from the other person's side, you'll be able to play this more effectively. That's basically going on. Two players working together to try to accomplish their goals as they play things down, uh, collecting astronauts and two teams of just, you know, trying to play things together. Uh, that's going to be Tether over here. Moving on, we have the Svanfeld City Collection, Vienna and Cusco. $240,000 raised out of a $15,000 goal. We have 851 backers, and this is bringing two more games in the Stefan Feld City Collection to your table. Now, for those who don't know, the Stefan Feld City Collection is a uh, Stefan Feld collaborating with Queen Games over a multi-year thing where they're, I think they're up to six games, yeah, number five and six of the collection. They're, they're collaborating across, you know, I don't even know how many games they have planned. I know they have more than these six, but I don't know exactly how many. And Vienna and Cusco specifically are going to be reprints of, of La, La Isla, I believe, and Bora Bora. Now, in general, from their games, only been one new one so far, Marrakesh. The rest of them have all been reprints, and they are all fairly expensive, giving you both a classic, still expensive, and deluxe, more expensive version of these games. That said, in the case of many of these games, they're out of print, and so these new reprinted versions are not that much more expensive than what your other options are for them, and there are some fantastic Stefan Feld games out there, including Bora Bora is one of my favorites, and I believe I believe Cusco is the reprint of Bora Bora, or reimagining, reprint, whatever. Currently, we have Hamburg, Amsterdam, New York, Marrakesh, Vienna, and Cusco. Hamburg, Amsterdam, and New York being reprints or redone versions of, I want to say, Rialto, Bruges, and Macau, I want to say. I think Hamburgers Macau, Amsterdam, no, Hamburgers Bruges, Amsterdam is Macau, and New York is Rialto, I believe. This is so confusing trying to keep like two different versions of games in your head, but hey, it all works. Uh, past that, these games do have re like redone changes to the game, so there are changes, there are modules, there are streamlined aspects, they are not completely carbon copies of the same game, they're rethemed and updated. And then we have Cusco and Vienna over here. Uh, Cusco over here, this is like La Isla and Bora Bora, uh, Cusco over here is the redone version of Bora Bora, you can tell because of the blue and orange tiles, a very distinctive uh, Bora Bora kind of thing going on there. And then past that we have, well we can see components, let's just scroll through components while I drink. Fitting nicely in the box over there. Custom metal coins over here. So for thirty nine dollars, you can also add custom coins to this. In general, these pledges. I mean, you can see over here on the sidebar, you can spend up to eight hundred and ninety dollars to get absolutely everything for these games. That's a lot of money for six euro games. And then again, it was a lot of money for Marvel Zombies, and that didn't scare people. So hey, you know, whether you prefer your euro games or whether you prefer your Ameritrash, uh, you know, just giant hordes of plastic on the table, there are definitely ways to spend lots of money whatever genre you're in. But past that over here, let's keep scrolling, so that's going to be what's going on there. Then we have Vienna over here. Vienna looks very different from the uh, island theme of La Isla over here. Now, this is one that I've only played once, way back in the day. I don't remember that much about it. I love Bor Bor. I still have it. La Isla is one of those Stefan Feld games that I enjoyed, but didn't feel the need to continue diving into. Some of the smaller box games didn't capture me quite as much. But yeah, that's what we have over here. And then we have just more content in the game, so you can check out content from Man vs. Meeple, as well as Paul Gro to see both overviews as well as how to plays from both of those content creators. Pass that over here. There's a bunch of ways to spend money over here. Let's just show you the sidebar. And again, we have $240,000 raised for a reason. There's demand for these games. There's a demand for the originals, there's demand for the new ones, and these are games that are going to hold their value, at least based on what we're seeing so far. We have $78 for Vienna Classic, $78 for Cusco Classic, $130 for the deluxe versions of those games, $150 if you want both classics, $240 if you want both classics plus Marrakesh. Marrakesh is fantastic, by the way. I hope to have review coverage so far. It's a very, very solid game. Very overwhelming and overbearing, but very, very solid. We have $250 for Vienna and Cusco Deluxe over there, and $395 for all three Deluxe if you want to get your hands on Marrakesh Deluxe as well, 
$4.90 for the six games classic bundle if you want all of those games. We don't care about all the bells and whistles and frills. $490, $490 will do that for you. And then we have $740 for the early bird SFCC six games deluxe bundle, but not with everything. So you'll get the coin set over there, the specific Stefan Feld coin set, not the unique coin sets for the games. Over here, we'll get the non-early bird version of that. And over here, we have $890 for the all-in, giving you all the coin sets and absolutely everything. Also, you get uh, deluxe printings give you like, you know, printed sleeve thingy on your box. So all your games both in this Kickstarter as well as future ones will have a specific printed number on those games unless you buy or trade for them separately that would be a different conversation entirely but that's what we have over here Stefan Feld City Collection Vienna and Cusco uh, that's showing up over here and yeah as far as holding its value the short version is so far from what we've seen these games do hold their value uh, they are expensive they are expensive that's not a question at all but they're also for some cases they are just as uh, they're the hardest way to get your hands on the games You're, you, you, these are out of print games and then reprinted versions that are expensive and so they've done fine holding their value despite the price point they are charging a premium for the quality of the design for the quality of the components and everything else and so far it's doing just fine like many games they are pricing out a degree of the market through the way they are doing so but there's no reason why Euro games also, Euro games in general, as well as anything else, can have deluxe versions of games. It's just something that's a little harder. I think it's a little harder to see it here because in the case of something like, I don't know, what's um, Darwin's Journey, for example, was also like a $90 game. But that was easy to say, hey, cool, cool, you're on Kickstarter. Let's go ahead and jump onto it. Versus these were games that were available in retail that have since been deluxified and put on Kickstarter. But they used to run you like 40, 50 bucks. And now they're running like $70 on the low end plus shipping. So it's a little harder to see that. But at the end of the day, they're charging something for a premium product, and it's a premium product that enough people want and value, and they will hold their value. Moving on, we have Rolling Meow the Cat Burglars, going from like, you know, $900 of Euro games to like a $5 print and play. We have Rolling Meow the Cat Burglars, a unique roll and write print and play game about cat burglars breaking into, into Mage's Mansions. 481 backers, $4,800 raised so far. This is one which you, five, five Euro for the game, that's what it is. And he's previously put out uh, this from um, uh, Radek Ignacio. I, probably saying that horribly, uh, but he's put out another few Roll and Rights as well. I think it was Island Alone was the last one that did fairly well. And this is a cat burglar game. Roll a bunch of dice, assign them in a way to break through the manor. Uh, you know, in real time, unlock safes as you rotate your dice around around a little board. Use your very, choose your, your, your mansion that you're breaking into, choose the cat burglar in question. So yeah, it's a cute, cute little Roll and Write game. Uh, with these print and plays, I don't heavily go into them. I also, I'm always like the art here, it looks great. I want it, but I also, it's a print and play and I still don't actually get those. I mean, I try not to get them because they're always compelling, but like, I don't actually play them. Anyways, moving on, we have Ascension Tactics Inferno. 1,800 backers, $254,000 raised out of a $20,000 goal, 14 days to go. And this is the, uh, you know, the, the standalone reprint, standalone expansion to the to Ascension Tactics, uh, bringing the most of the same gameplay, plus some updates in terms of new new cards, new new uh, heroes to play with, uh, new new scenarios to go through, as well as evolving heroes. They have this new concept. They have a few new things in the game, but one of them is going to be the idea that heroes that can convert based on certain criteria that they meet, and so they convert into new, more powerful versions of those heroes once they do things. But yeah, that's going to be the Kickstarter version of this game. This is basically area. This is a, a, a skirmish, a deck building skirmish game, combining both of those genres. If you've played Ascension, you can jump into this game with like three minutes of rules. It is basically Ascension, in which you happen to be controlling miniatures on the board while you play Ascension. That's what it is. Now, the controlling of the miniatures is very important, but the gameplay is basically the same. So yes, if you've played Ascension, this is going to be easy to pick up in two seconds. And if you've played any deck builder and any skirmish game, it's going to be easy to pick up in like five minutes. It's really, really not a hard game to learn. But past that, it's a game that's going to give you deck building, and through the deck building, you're going to be controlling the miniatures that you place onto the board as you wander around trying to accomplish your goals in either cooperative, competitive, or solo scenarios in this game. And it is very scenario-based, you know, what, however, you're, whichever playing method you're playing it as, they have different scenarios in the game to give you different challenges or different ways to, to utilize the same engine while approaching it from a different strategic angle in the game. Uh, they're also going to be giving you miniatures, they're also going to be giving you content from the original Kickstarter if you missed out on that. So if you wanted the original Kickstarter with the original miniatures and all that stuff, you can go ahead and get that in this campaign as well. So they're giving you that option for anyone who missed it because this game is available at retail fairly cheaply. I can't remember the exact price, but on, on Miniature Market, I think it was like $45 for the, for the base game, for just the base game, call it a day, nothing extra. Uh, but that's what you have over here on the campaign. So this is going to be giving you a few options. We're going to be giving you $60 is going to give you the Ascension Tactics Inferno over here. That's going to be giving you stretch goals, but no miniature stretch goals in the game. And then we have Tactics Inferno Experience, $135 for giving you all the miniatures in the game, 50 plus miniatures, plus all the stretch goals and everything else that's coming through the campaign. $175 will give you an additional 350 sleeves and the Inferno playmat. And then for $350, you have full Tactical Assault over here, which is going to be giving you basically everything you can see. The Inferno minis, the Inferno playmat, 
the Inferno sleeves, all that stuff showing up there, and that is what we have. Oh, and then for two thousand dollars, you can get personal Inferno as well. And past that, you have stretch goals showing up, all these things slowly unlocking in the game. Here we go, stretch goals, five thousand followers. We have board game geek quest, the uh, you know the various miniatures. And again, keep in mind you might not be getting miniatures depending on the pledge level you're getting at. But that's what we have going on in Ascension Tactics. As far as to show you back, it should you not. It kind of depends on what your goal is. If you just want to play this game, honestly, retail is your cheapest bet. This game is available at retail, and it's available fairly affordably, too. This is not a hard game to get your hands on, but it is a game. Oh, I do have a preview coverage. Not preview. I have first impressions coverage. You can check that out as well. And there's a gameplay over on Professor Meg's channel. But yeah, going back to uh, should you back it. If you just want the game, it's available fairly affordably online. The, the original game, too. And I'm sure this will follow the same trend as well with Ascension Tactics Inferno. If you want the miniatures, you'll have to pay much more for them. And that's the only way to get your hands on it is to get it secondhand market or to get it from the campaign. And as far as that goes, you could get it on the campaign. But so far, these games have not held the value. If you look at the original Ascension Tactics, it's selling both the miniatures and the non-miniatures version. Both sell for below their value, below their price point. So this is one that you can definitely back it. But I would say your options are either if your just goals to just save money then go ahead and just get the retail version and call it a day and not here just when it shows up in retail if your goal is to get the miniatures then if you and you want to save money yeah uh, getting on the second hand market is the way to get it at the most affordable price point but if you don't want to deal with that then yes the campaign will be your best option over there and that's going to be ascension tactics inferno next up we have aventuria stories and legends two expansions to aventuria the card game which is a rpg ish card driven game in which you're going on adventures leveling up your heroes trying to figure out how to take down the enemies in this game and this one introduces stories and legends as well as two new hero packs There's a bunch of new content for this game it's right over on bgg you can check it out rated 7.5 has a lot of praise around different aspects of the game of the of how it plays and all that stuff the, the character depth the rpg adjacency all that stuff but past that the game itself is going to be coming back to to kickstarter with the full all-in pledges if you want any of that or alternatively just getting the new expansion content for it uh, we're gonna have 45 euro for the new heroes over here if you just want the new heroes a uh, guarantee double mercenary or alpha and blessed one of born if you want the new hero content it's gonna run you 40 Five euro for the game. If you're looking for the new to adventure over here, 120 euro for the adventure card game. This is if you're new to the system, so this is going to be original content for the game. But if you're new to the system, 120 euro is going to get you the adventure card game, Force of No Return, Ship of Lost Souls, and Ship of Stone, with only two backers here. So it seems like most people are here for, well, the new stuff. Past that, we have 145 euro giving you new stories and legends, Path of Legends box, and Mythical Stories box. It's going to be new ways to explore adventure area, and new ways, new, new degrees of character depth, and continuous upgrade and development of the characters, as opposed to being purely single shot over here so it's going to give you new content for the game over there then we have new stories legends and heroes if you want all the new content for the game it's going to run you 180 euro Path of Legends, Mythical Stories Box, Alphanian Double on, the Best on the Born, and Garethian Double Mercenary. And then we have 299 euro for Expanded New to Aventuria, and 599 euro for everything for Aventuria. Lots of ways to spend lots of money today. But past that, over here, as far as the should you back or should you not, looking at the uh, sold part, looking at the sold copies on the Board and Geek Market, it does look like this is one that is less likely to hold its value. It looks like this is one that sells for below what you paid for it, so do factor that in as you go through it. This is one that has a lot of cool content and a ton of rave reviews about it. Lots of people who really, really like the system and what's going on here. But at the same time, it's one that you can either go, you know, you can try to get on a budget. You can try to find a used copy on the BG market to see if it's for you. This is one where you can be spending 600 euro to get your hands on everything. And so you want to be sure it's a game for you before you do so, because it's unlikely you'll get that 600 euro back if you find out that it's not. If you're just jumping in as an ex wanting expansion content, that's a whole different story because you might already know that you like the system. That's going to be Aventuria Stories and Legends. From there, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition Legends. Speaking of Legends, we have more Legends over on GameFound with Street Fighter 5. Currently at $60,000 raised out of a $40,000 goal, 523 backers, 19 days left to go. Street Fighter V Champion Edition Legends is going to be a kind of dungeon crawl adjacent experience. You're going to be controlling your Street Fighters, going through scenarios as you mix and match the scenarios, the bosses, the enemy type, the, the enemy units you're fighting against, your particular uh, nemesis that you're fighting against, all of that, just a ton of content mixing and matching, even, even your fighter, choosing which fighter decks to play with over there. You can be using all that content to create your own custom scenarios over there, not custom scenarios, that makes it sound like you're working here, to create your unique scenarios as you go through it, as you figure out how you're going to take down the enemies while you play cards down to activate your combo meter. The cards themselves have abilities, but then you can utilize the symbols on those cards to cash them in. So cards have two effects, what they do now and how you're going to cash them in later, which is especially helpful because you can activate your combos when it's not even your turn, which can really be useful to getting you out of a pinch as the enemy slowly activate at the end of each player's turn, putting you in worse and worse and more dire straits in the game. This is a challenging experience. I have a review over my channel. You can check that out. There's a lot of other content on the game from a variety channel 
panels. It's a very challenging experience. This is not a casual beat em up. This is a beat em up, make no mistake. This is a roll dice play card to activate your combo meter dungeon crawler experience. And it's a lot of fun and it's very challenging at the same time, which to me is part of the fun. Games like this, if they're a walk in the park, I lose interest so quickly. This game is winnable, absolutely. I've won this game, but I've also lost heavily too. And it's a lot of fun going through that experience as you try to figure out how to change your actions, your activations, and benefit from your combo meter and your specific abilities as you go through the experience. Lots of trade-offs, lots of decisions to make as you go through this. Uh, past that, as far as the pledge levels over here, we have the fighter tier for $75 and the combo tier giving you the expansion, the four kings, for $115. Uh, it looks as far as add-ons, the four kings so far, and then a few stretch goals being unlocked already. And I know that there's, uh, what's it called? Over here, the standees. The game is a mix of standees and miniatures, which for me personally doesn't work as much. I kind of like almost want all standees or all miniatures, I, I I don't love the mix. And I know that they've said in the comments that they are potentially looking into options to upgrading components, but that depends on how well the campaign's doing, so we'll see over there. But I'd love to see, I think they said I think they said acrylic standees. Personally, I'd love to see acrylic standees for everything. I think this game would work well with acrylic standees for everything, but I think they already have miniatures for the hero, so there's that. That's gonna be Street Fighter, the Street, Street Fighter V Champ Edition Legends by Colossal Games over on GameFound. Then we have Lords of Vegas over on Kickstarter, $121,000 raised, 1,100 backers, 20 days to go. This is an updated six-player version of Lords of Vegas, plus the expansions, plus if you want it, the deluxe over-the-top, I think it's actually sold out, but like for $600 or something like that, there's the deluxe over-the-top briefcase and everything to really make you feel like you got everything going on. This is from Lone Shark Games, and this is a, this was previously published by Mayfair before, I think Mayfair went out of business, I'm like 99% sure. There's a lot of companies over there, I think they were either acquired, went out of business, whatever it is, but May, Lords, Lords of Vegas uh, is a game that I got into way, way back. This is one of the first games I actually ever played, probably in like my first like 20 games or so, and it's a solid game. It's really got a lot of things, and it feels like you're in Vegas. You're playing on the strip, and you're running casinos, and you're buying plots of land, and you're going to be, you know, uh, stealing plots of land, stealing sections, gambling at the casino. There's a lot. This game really leans into the gambling theme and lots of risk and reward going on. A lot of the decisions you make in the game are about managing the stats of the game, but then hoping for the best based on how things roll and it feels, it feels, if you want a game that feels like you're both playing a Euro game but also playing a Euro game in Vegas, this is that game. For better or for worse, if you don't like luck in your games, this definitely has a hefty degree of luck, but it's luck borne out by stats, which means across the course of the game, hopefully things work out for you. But yes, you get a few bad rolls early on and your engine is not going to be up and running the same way you want it to be. So a lot of good, but a little bit of bad and mixed into just how strongly this leans into the Vegas theme. Past that though, great game. This is going to give you the expansions over here as well as an updated six player version. And yes, if you have the Mayfair edition of the game, they have an upgrade pack where you can upgrade your original game as well so you don't need to completely rebuy everything that's gonna be on the table as well over here so over here we have pledge levels we have the americano which is the all new americano version including games for four new cities requires any lords of vegas base set to play so you do require the base set of Lords of Vegas. That's going to be $40 with a combo platter. New expansion adds Americana and con jobs. Then we have over here, we have Table for Six, the newly refreshed six-player base game. And Lords of Vegas is a game that I don't remember. I think, I mean, I've definitely played it at four. I don't think the, the original game stops at four, right? Not five. But I've played this at four. I don't know if I'd play it at six, just instinctively. I think that any games that play at six require specific things for me to really lean into them, like specifically quick, quick, quick turns. I don't know if I'd want to play this at six, but if you do want that option, that's here. You have the dinner package, everything new to this campaign, including everything new to this campaign. Then we have the Grand Buffet over here, the new base set, all the expansions. We have the all you can eat for $200, as well as, you know, a new set of 100 themed poker chips. And then we have the boss table for 400, not 600, I apologize. That gives you the deluxe over the case, although that is currently sold out. Currently, that reward is not available, although if any of these nine backers do drop out, you could be one of the lucky people to jump in there if you're interested in that. And then we have add-ons as well if you're interested in any of that. But that's what's going on as far as Lords of Vegas. And then lots of review content checking it out. This game's been out for a while, which means there's been a lot of time for people to fall in love with the original game and just rave about it. And it's out of print and hard to get, which is going to factor into the should you back it, should you not. And the short version over here is is out of print and hard to get. This one kind of falls into a similar category as the Queen Games category of games that we talked about already, which is to say it's expensive. It's a lot of money for a game that used to run you like 40 bucks and call it a day. But time has passed. The things have gotten more expensive. They're going to be giving you a lot of improved options from six player sets to expansions and all those things. So you're getting a lot for your money over here. And most importantly, this game is out of print. Right now, the base game, forget all these extras, the base game tends to run you 70 to, 70 to $100, which is going to factor into the should you back it over here. Uh, 
uh, should you back it, should you not, I believe this one will hold its value. Some of that does depend on just how wide there is any additional retail availability down the road. Obviously, if this shows up in retail for less money, that changes the conversation. But I believe this one is likely to fall into the same pattern as it has before, as it has so far, which is being available temporarily, then kind of being out of stock again until the next day app. And so I think overall, this is likely, not a guarantee, but likely to hold its value, just given the demand for this game and the fact that there's not going to be a ton of copies in distribution in general. So Lords of Vegas, an updated six player base set, lots of expansions, lots of pledge levels, fantastic game with a heavier dose of luck than some of your Euros, but also very heavily leaning into the theme of Lords of Vegas. Moving on, we have Kyperium. We got two left to go. We have Kyperium, $13,000 raised, 205 backers, 27 days to go. Kyperium over here, is a two-player worker placement engine coming from Whitewater Castle, actually technically Whitewater Castle in conjunction with uh, Dragon Egg Games, but this is going to be a two-player worker placement game which you're playing cards down into this grid that are giving you one-time bonuses but giving your opponents worker placement spots in the game, or you're playing them to your side. You're playing them to your side of the grid, giving you one-time bonuses, giving your opponent wor uh, worker placement benefits, but then hopefully you're trying to like self-destruct those areas in order to progress your engine, so you're trying to get the one-time bonus, then move on and get the, uh, the next bonus you need and deny your opponent the benefit of the worker placement spot as efficiently as possible. To that end, this game can play pretty tightly, can play pretty meanly, or it could play a, play a little more ambiently if you're not as focused on denying your opponent. You could just play it towards just achieving your own goals, not really worrying about denying your opponent. You might lose if they're playing a cutthroat, but you could play this game either a little more cutthroat or a little less cutthroat. It kind of depends on the people playing it. But practically speaking, it's a race to get to the end over here on this track, and you're trying to generate these points to move along this board. I have a review content, you can check that out, and a lot of other content as well on the game. As far as should you back it, should you not, there's two pledge levels over here, and currently Currently, the pledge levels are going to be the $49 Kyperium Kickstarter Edition, and then for $78, we have the Founder Edition, which seems to give you just four exclusive cards and your name in the credits. That seems to be the extra stuff you're getting in the uh, Founder Edition of the game, as opposed to the, uh, what's it called? Uh, but past that, let me just double check over here, we have the, the base game, we have the rewards, we have the components of here, Kyperium, All Unlock Stretch Goals, Founder Edition, Founder Edition, yeah, that's what we got as far as the Founder Edition over there. But past that, as far as should you back it, should you not, uh, this one is likely, is less, a little less likely to hold its value. Right now with 205 backers, this falls into the category of one that's just not going to have a ton of aftermarket demand, which means if you get this one, Kickstarter is your best option to get it, but if you do get this one over here, it's one that's a little less likely to hold its value just given the lack of a ton of demand for the game. And so it's one that if you want it, I recommend getting your hands on it, but if you don't, then uh, it's less like, if, you, if you're unsure of it, it's one that you're less likely to get your money back if it's the game that doesn't work out for you. And then lastly, we have a reviving Catholic Kathmandu. 797 backers, $335,000 raised. This is Reviving Kathmandu coming to you from Lemery Games, who've done three games so far. They've done uh, the, uh, they've done uh, the, hot, the something Chili Mafia, Chili Mafia, and they've done Bag, Bag Cal or something along those lines. And Chili Mafia is going to be this in their, uh, their city, the Globe Trotter series, which was previously Chili Mafia, and now they have this one over here. And Reviving Kathmandu is a bidding game, which you're kind of creating, you're placing down tiles, you have, uh, if every player has five tokens, and you're using those tokens across two rounds of play. So a total of eight rounds of play, in each round you're going to use four tokens and hold on to one for the benefit of the token. You're going to be playing those tokens down into the grid to try to get the cards you need to lay out the to build the set collection that you need in this game because this game is a set collection engine in which you gather certain cards trying to build certain different height size buildings in the game trying to get the right colors the right spot in the building the right build the things that work towards your goal to achieve your own personal goals in the game while also getting points for the buildings and ideally right color is going to score you nice little bonus points so that's helpful too uh, but as far as that's basically the game you then cross four eight rounds of play you're gathering two cards per round 16 cards total a few ways to get extra cards with that extra chip and then score as many points as possible in the game system uh past that now there's Totally past that, it's just that that's the game. It's a bidding game as you try to gather cards and build them into a set. As far as the pledge levels for this game, we have $7 for the print and play of the game, we have $35 for the deluxe edition of the game, and we have $42 for the deluxe edition plus expansion, and then $59 if you also want the Chili Mafia as well as part of that pledge. Uh, expansion over here is one that actually looks intriguing. I have not played with the expansion. The expansion is, let me see if I can find it, it was the Senior Architect's expansion, which is through several rounds of buildings, you may want to look for new challenges and advance your architect skills. Looks like it could be fun. That looks like it adds something extra to the game, and then Chili Mafia. I haven't played this. Don't know much about it. I believe uh, Chris George uh, from Moon Board has covered this one. In fact, speaking of which, Chris George from Moon Board has covered this one too, uh, reviving Kathmandu as well, and I would recommend watching his original Chili Mafia coverage, and then watching his reviving Kathmandu coverage, because Pablo... 
Pablo shows up again. I'm just saying, Pablo shows up again. But anyways, that's as far as Raven Kathman Doom. Should you back it, should you not, will it hold this value? So overall, the actual game itself, very premium, very deluxe, looks very cool. Like, I have the prototype, I covered the prototype. It's just gorgeous as far as the components and production, and that's even just a prototype. As far as the, will, should, should you back it, should you not, it's hard to say. There's not a ton of data on Chili Mafia just yet. I am skeptical that it will. It's a smaller box game, and the price point is reasonable, but not amazing. And then once you factor in shipping, it's one that I'm skeptical you'll get your money back on as far as the aftermarket, if this is a game that doesn't overall work for you. So you can back it, but I don't think it's one that, you know, is like as far as your options getting it now, getting it getting it later. Uh, if you're not in a rush for this one, I don't think it's essential. But that's as far as what we have for these games, which means it's time to do our picks of the week. In general, for picks of the week, we do two things. We do two picks of the week. One is my personal interest pick of the week, the game that I am most interested in, the game that I most want to play, enjoy, all that stuff. And then secondly, we do the game that is most likely to hold its value. And from there, it's kind of a Kind of a, a, a torn one, we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Basically, we have over here, we have for the, my personal pick of the week, we have Street Fighter V Champ Edition Legends. That's the one that I'm most interested in personally. I really enjoyed this one, had a lot of fun with it, and I'm, I'm excited to dive back into the final game of this. And then past that, for my most likely to hold this value, we have over here, we have the Stefan Feld City Collection, Vienna and Cusco. This one was tied for my pick of the week. I love Bora Bora, so this one, meaning my personal pick of the week, Cusco would also apply to a degree. I, I love Bora Bora a lot, and would probably get that one as well. But I try to usually split these up, and so to that end, we have the Stefan Feld City Collection is the one that is most likely, most likely to hold its value from these games over here. And with that, we're going to go ahead and call it. Next week, there'll be a whole bunch of games coming up, I think. Maybe I actually haven't looked. The next week, there might be a whole bunch of games coming up. And if not, we'll always have something here, because we always have a video here any every Monday, always Kickstarter focused, and that is basically everything going on. And that's it. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks for sticking with me until now, and as always, I hope you have a good one. I've been reading a horror book in rail. Something bad is going to happen. I can feel it. <laughs>